I'm here with Joe Domaleski, the founder of Country Fried Creative. Joe, tell me a little bit about what you do and for how long you've been doing it. Nate, it's hard to believe, but next year will be our 20th year in business. Um, on, a, on a wing and a prayer, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, we started the business. Uh, we're a digital marketing firm. We started off as a web design company. And over the years, we added creative services, social media management, and now we're a full service digital marketing agency. Perfect. So what is your goal? Where do you want to take the company long term? That's a great question. As I have aged, um, you know, my goals for the company have have somewhat aged with me. Uh, we have 17 employees and we have enough people in the firm and several folks that have been with me for a very long time, they are now in leadership roles. So in the next five years, I really want to continue to develop their leadership ability so that they can operationally run the business. Uh, while we're doing that, I want to maintain our corporate culture, uh, which I'm very proud of. And I also want us to continue to provide value and great service to our customers while we do all that. That's awesome. Yeah, having a longstanding team like that really rings true to the, the cult culture that you've built and the inclusiveness of the business. Thanks. So tell me a little bit about your target market. Who are you aiming to help? You know, that's a fascinating question that, frankly, the answer has not really changed that much in 20 years. Um, I know that a lot of marketing agencies specialize in a vertical market. By design, we have chosen not to do that. Um, I think that puts us in a better perspective to provide truly handmade creative solutions. Um, all too often, a, a vertical marketing agency, um, all their work looks the same. They're just kind of packaging it up and reselling it to people. And before you know it, everybody in that industry has the same website and the same logo. And, you know, we really take pride in, in having a more diversified, uh, you know, approach in terms of our clients. Now, having said that, I think it's fair to say that our sweet spot as a small business ourselves uh, tends to be small and medium uh, businesses and nonprofits that are uh, in this local community like we are. Awesome. So. You know, as I do these interviews, I try and help business owners learn from one another. What is one mistake or a lesson that you've learned in your time running the business that other business owners or entrepreneurs could learn from, irregardless of their industry? Nate, that's a great question. And I recently wrote a little blog piece about this. And um, just to answer it uh, right here and now, a key mistake that 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 I've made uh, many times, and I will probably make it more. I tend to be a very trusting person, and whether I'm talking to a team member or a client or even a, a common business associate, um, the mistake I've made is assuming things are just fine, even though they really aren't. Um, not everybody is transparent. Um, about problems they're having. And sometimes it's because they're too polite. Uh, sometimes they just don't wanna bring up bad news. And so a smart person once told me, trust but verify. So um, as I lean forward into growing the business, I'm, I do wanna trust people. I am a trusting person, but I would encourage others to learn from my mistake. And it's okay to trust, but, but spot check and verify. Absolutely. So you touched on this a little bit with, with some great advice you've had in the past. Who's been a great coach or mentor you've had and why? My last boss before I started the company, and, and, and he was such a great mentor that even you know when I started the business, I, I, I sought counsel from him. Uh, a, a, a guy by the name of Harry Moser. Uh, Harry was uh, just an incredible uh, mentor. Uh, he had faith in me. He encouraged me. He challenged me and also inspired me. And, and, and honestly, I find myself kind of in Harry's role now with my, with my team. I'm about his age that he was when he was my mentor. 
And oftentimes I kind of just kind of privately ask myself, how would Harry handle this? That's awesome. Having, having that role model to go back to and, and being in the same position now. So you talked a little bit about this, but what does the future look like for Country Fried and what are some challenges you see moving forward? You can hear my dog barking in the uh, the background. I don't know if we're getting an Amazon delivery or not, but um, we'll just roll with it because this is this is live. And uh, <laughs> that's just kind of the modern age. You know, Nate, um, we've had two years of COVID. And depending upon your definition of recession, we are either in one or about to enter one. Um, you know, despite these challenges, our business has continued to grow. And I'm, I'm proud of that. Um, but we are really starting to see some signs of uh, economic slowdown. Uh, I've seen even here in the local community, some local businesses shut down. And, and so I think the main challenge ahead is simply uncertainty. We just really don't know, um, you know, whether it's uh, supply, more supply chain disruptions, the labor market's been all over the place. We went mm -hmm. from, you know, not enough jobs to too many jobs. And now some of the bigger employers are laying people off. Um, I think for the for the small and medium, you know, uh, business leader, it's just that uncertainty. That That's the biggest challenge. Yeah, yeah. And with all those challenges that we're going through now and, and have passed through in the, in the last several years, what would you recommend to a young person that is starting their first business in today's world? This is a piece of advice that somebody smart gave me when I started the business. Book your first customer or client before you ever open the doors. Um, that will do a couple things immediately. Number one is it will make you believe in what you're doing because to sell something before you actually have it in hand uh, is, is a very powerful skill to have. And, and secondly, quite honestly, and you know this as well, even though I'm in, in a market, you know, I own a marketing agency, you know, word of mouth marketing for a small and medium business is still king. Um, once you get that first raving fan, I mean, that, that can set you up for success. So I would tell somebody starting out, do your best to go ahead before you officially start and book your first customer. Yeah. Have, have that great referral strategy in place to spread the word. Awesome. So tell me about how people can find out more about you or more about Country Fried Creative. What's the best way to get in touch? Okay. So, you know, we are, you know, having had the business for almost 20 years, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm personally very active in the community. Um, you can, you can do an internet search and, and find out more about me. I've got a newspaper column. I just recently launched and, and enjoyed doing that in the citizen newspaper. If you just do a, 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 an internet search on Country Fried Creative, you know, our website will come up. And, uh, you know, I do want to kind of, you know, make this, this offer to anybody watching this. I, I really believe in, you know, the fact that you reap what you sow. And even if it's not immediate business for my company, I do think that, you know, making people feel good, Helping people where you can uh, is a good thing to do. I also know you believe that, Nate, because you you personify that yourself. So anybody that's that's watching this or listening to this, uh, if I can help you in any way, even if it's not marketing, if you're trying to get into a new market, if you're trying to meet somebody uh, in, in the local community and you need a door opener, I'm, I'm happy to open doors because I know that, you know, people did that for me when I started out. And uh, I would, it would be an honor to, uh, to help other people in whatever way that I can. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. My last question and one of my favorite is what most inspires you as you continue to grow and move forward in the business today? You know, that's a, a, a simple uh, answer that, that, that's been with me for, for a while. Um, you know, it's simply this, Nate, people who can endure adversity with a cheerful, optimistic disposition. It's all too common for people to gripe and complain about things and, and get into a, a downward you know, spiral of negativity. And make no mistake, running a business has been one of the most rewarding things I've done. It's also been the hardest thing I've ever done. But 
I just truly admire and am inspired by people who can endure adversity and challenges and do it with a smile and still be optimistic about the future. That really inspires me. Awesome. Well, Joe, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me today for the interview. Thanks, Nate.